Your Majesty. Uh, King Graham? Oh, uh, yes, Minister, um... Gervain, sire. Of course. My apologies, Gervain. Not necessary, Your Majesty. After all, I've been your security and defense minister for but a short while. Yes. Where did you say you were from again? Just some small, insignificant land to the far south. Pales greatly in comparison to your realm, my lord. Ah, do you have something to report? As a matter of fact, my liege, there's a small concern regarding the duty shifts of some of the castle guards and of the countryside patrols. Also, we are expecting our armed entourage from our nearest neighbor to return within the week. And there is the matter of an alliance with... My liege? My apologies again, Minister Gervain. Please, continue. Yes. As I was saying, there is the matter of an alliance with Usperia. They have become a strong nation now, and it may be prudent to show our willingness to support them, lest they decide we are more of a hindrance than a help. Does the king there have any daughters who've come of age? Uh, I do not believe so, sire. As for the security arrangements for the royal ball held last week, I do believe the evening went by very smoothly. I dare say just about every princess in this region attended, and not one last slipper, to coin a phrase. Ugh, please, do not remind me. Indeed, they were none too fetching. Would you like me to go over your plans for today, my lord? Very well. Hmm? Oh, forgive me once again. I am afraid that my mind wanders much these days. I wonder if my predecessor experienced times like these. No doubt. Though I did not know King Edward the Benevolent personally, I understand he was a happy and astute man during his married life, before his wife passed away, that is. If I may be so bold, perhaps my lord is feeling that certain rooms in his castle are somewhat sparsely filled. The throne room, for example. And other rooms that serve but a single soul, like your dining room and your bed chambers. <laughs> Perhaps, but I do fear I've met no such candidates that would fill the rooms you have mentioned. You should not lose heart, Your Majesty. If you pause to reflect for but a moment, you may see clearly what is hidden to others. You gaze into the mirror. The minister's words seem to echo in your head. If you pause to reflect for but a moment. Not that you've been doing much else lately. For many weeks now, you've been reflecting over the direction your life has taken. While Daventry has prospered under your wise leadership, so far your existence has been a dreadfully lonely one. Wait, the mirror is changing. As you watch, you begin to see a series of images, though you struggle to fathom their meaning. You recognize the landscape. It is Kalima, a land not far from Daventry.
you see the most beautiful woman you have ever set eyes upon. Somehow you can feel her sadness and her intense desire to leave that place. She is a prisoner in that tower. Did you find what you were looking for, sire? I require my ship ready for transport, Gervain. I shall be going on a trip presently. Indeed. Where shall I tell the captain you'll be heading? To Kalima. I have to find someone. I see. Well, if you must go, it is my duty to ensure that you leave prepared. Arm yourself, sire. I hear Kalima is not the safe haven it once was. Of course. I shall take the sword of the first king, as is my right. A wise precaution, sire. And, uh... If I may be so branch to ask, who might you be seeking? If all goes well, my bride. Sister Agatha. How may I be of service? An opportunity has arisen, sister. I trust you still have your captive held securely away. Of course. A bit cruel keeping her locked away like that, do you not think? No. How dare she flaunt her beauty in front of all to see? Her foolish male admirers see her and forget that I was the most beautiful of all in my day. And in your own special way, you are still beautiful. <laughs> you devil! That is not an unfair description. Now, you mentioned a service, I believe. Yes. The King of Devontree has advised his faithful minister that he shall be departing for Kalima presently. On a quest, you might say. Really? What kind? The kind that involves sticking his neck out to rescue a damsel in distress. And what have I to do with his neck? Put simply, my dear, sever it! A day's journeying from Daventry has found you by the shores of Kalima. Your ship, the Grand Thethor, and its crew have deposited you and will return the day after tomorrow. Hopefully this will give you enough time to locate and release the imprisoned woman you saw in the magic mirror. A net has been caught around one of the pier's pylons. You untangle the net from the pylon and take it with you.
One of the trees here seems to be growing around some rocks. There is a sizable hole in one of the trees. When you peer into the hole of the pine tree, you see a mallet lying there. You pick it up and take it with you. It is likely that this haystack was piled here by farmers from the town. A faded blue sheet has been tightly stretched across it to prevent the straw from blowing away in the wind. Hey! What? Who said that? I did! Huh? I'm down here, in the hay! Oh. Well, who are you? My name is... Uh... Um... Yes? Hmm. I can't seem to remember. Achoo! Well then, what are you? Oh, I'm a... Um... Uh... Yes? Hmm. Can't seem to remember that either. Well, what are you doing in this haystack? That's easy! I was looking for... Oh. Um... You can't remember? No. Sorry. How long have you been in there? Let's see. It couldn't be longer than... Uh... Yes? Three? Maybe four weeks? Weeks? Yep. Pardon me for saying, but you sound as if you have a bit of a cold. Yes! It's all this hay! It's giving me hay fever! You see a man bending over the fountain. He appears to be trying to retrieve something from it. Aha! Got him! A tall statue of a man stands prominently at the entrance of town. It looks to have been placed here quite a number of years ago. The statue bears a plaque which reads, Count Kaldor, ruler and protector of Kalima. The merchant has a distinct out-of-town appearance and a get-out-of-town aroma. Greetings, merchant. Ah, to you, good day. A visitor arrived new, no? A sense I possess for these things? Need you have for my wares of great specialty? Perhaps. But first, I'm curious. Where did you come by such a pumpkin? Eyes quite keen have you. Indeed, a specimen unique it is. Mama! Me want Mama! Be quiet. The gift of speech among plants so rare, yes? Quite so. Are you planning to sell it? Sell? Never would I sell such a thing as this. It'll make me incredibly ri- Uh... I mean, entrusted it was to my care. Watch over it, I must. Mama! Take me back to my mama! Forget it. I'm not taking you back to that patch. So pipe down. Pardon? Ah, of importance I speak not. Trouble to your ears, I meant none. You glance at the titles on this shelf. Remember the Triton. An autobiography from the ruler of the Mer people. You glance at the titles on this shelf. Chronicles of the Brady Bunch. 
Interesting, this book has a warning label. Prolonged exposure may cause irreparable damage to your perception of reality. Icebergs and unsinkable ships. The legends of Weirwood Forest. Trolls and Bridges, an obsession explained. Guidebook to the Land of Tamir. A Tale of the Flanneled One. Apparently, this book is about the author of a six-part space opera. Livin' La Vida Loca. How Not to Turn a Novel into a Film. See Dune. Curses and Counter Curses and How Not to Get Them Confused. 101 Things to Do When You Are Lonely. You are not even going to touch this one. Let's get physical with what, you wonder. Modern Inventions Monthly. This month's edition focuses on an essay entitled Reinventing the Wheel. Shrimps and Barbecues, an inexplicable connection. Carnivorous Plants, when and what to feed them without arousing suspicion. It is written by a man named Seymour Krellborn. Cooking Tips for Singles. While you are single and you can't cook, you still have no need of this book. At least, not with the entire kitchen staff at your disposal back home. Even Rotten Tomatoes deserve a little respect. Remember the Triton. A Traveler's Guide to Ludor. You skim through the book. It describes a small town which serves as a port of call for passing ships. Apparently, it is under the jurisdiction of a wizard who is not at all popular with the locals. Selling your wares without selling yourself. The art of being a lowly merchant and feeling proud of it. Mildly curious, you open the book. The first chapter is entitled, The Truth of Falsity. It begins to describe how to make a totally worthless item seem like a must-have for the gullible buyer. A later chapter entitled, The Serious Business of Talking Funny, details how to adopt a foreign accent and use fragmented grammar to convince the same gullible buyer that you are not just some ordinary con artist trying to make a quick gold. Usperia, the many that became one. This book tells of how, over time, the realm of Usperia ceased to be a multitude of feuding regions and became a united kingdom. Once unable to defend itself, even as a whole, it now has a large standing army. The present lord of the realm is said to be kind, generous, and wise. The art of becoming a porculus to porculus salesman. Melodies for minstrels. Ooga Booga Land and Other Undesirable Travel Destinations. The Carpenter's Handbook. The Big Book of British Smiles. Chronicles of the Brady Bunch. Interesting, this book has a... You glance at the titles on this shelf, revealing the truth about seeing unicorns and something about oneself in the process. Future's History, the true story of Space Quest 12. Gullible's Travels. A guide to bush ranging, safety tips on robbery while wearing a metal box on your head. The theory of relativity and other half-baked crackpot ideas. Arrival of the Ancients, were there origins of this world? That seems like a silly title. Where else would they have come from? The stars? Chronicling the longest journey. Or, how to sustain a compelling story when your lead character sounds like an airhead. Magic for the layman. All you need is a good book. Dragon slaying for dummies. Dwarves are from Mars. Elves are from Venus. The Taming of the Shrew. Jousting and other party games. The Beginner's Guide to Buying Your First Horse. Drunks and Monks, How to Tell Them Apart. Quest for Glory, A Hero's Death. 10 Easy Steps to Owning Your Own Castle. Revealing the Truth 
Futures History Gullibles A rather plump and stern-looking woman is seated behind the desk. Every so often, she glances away and appears to lose her train of thought. The monotony of being a librarian must be getting to her. May I help you? Yes, I was hoping to enrich my knowledge of this fair land by way of perusing your historical texts. My, that was well put. No! Not terribly effective, though. You get no response. Um, pardon me, perhaps I was not clear? You were! Then may I? No! Why can't I? You are not a member! Well then, can I become a member? No! Why can I not become a member? We already have far too many members. It's difficult to keep track of everything. How many members are there? Two. If I may inquire, who are your two members? You may not. Neither the Count of Kalima nor the elderly gentleman who lives next door would approve of my divulging that information to you. Ah, thank you anyway. You mentioned that the Count of Kalima is a member of this library. Yes! Have you seen him recently? The librarian looks at you strangely. No! You get... Is there any way I might meet the Count? Yes! How? Die! I would have to die to meet the Count? Depends! On what? Your importance! And if I am important? Then you might be fortunate enough to be buried on his estate. Who is buried on the Count's estate? Counts! Aha! Past Counts, of course. Anyone else? Yes! Who? Him! Pardon? Do you mean the Count is dead? The librarian decides to avoid your gaze and seems disinclined to speak further with you on the subject. The librarian seems disinclined to speak further with you. There appears to be a sign on the door, but you need to get closer to read it. The town continues to the east away, but you are not interested in what lies in that direction. The door is locked. You notice a tiny corner of something poking out slightly from beneath it. You attempt to edge it out with your fingers, but you cannot manage to get a grasp on it. The door is plain and has a mail slot. It also has a sign posted on it. You read it. You also notice something sticking out from under the door. Making sure that no one is watching, you slide your thin blade under the door and draw out what appears to be a letter. You open the letter and read it. Dear applicant, please find and close the library membership card to which you are now entitled. The five-year application process has concluded and we are pleased to inform you that your status as a member of the town library is confirmed. Welcome to an exclusive group of patrons. Yours sincerely, Town Librarian. P.S. Please sign your name on the card to ensure validation.
You quickly grab the quill while the librarian isn't looking and sign your name on the blank library card. You replace the quill before the librarian notices it missing. Will you accept this? Yes! You are younger than I expected. Uh, I eat well and get a lot of exercise. I see. So, what do I do now? Borrow. You mean I can take books from this library? No. Oh. Yes? Could you recommend a good book? The librarian has placed the book on the desk for you to read. Thoughtful, isn't she? This book is entitled, Kalima, Perfect One Day, Better the Next. Browsing through it, you notice an interesting excerpt. This pumpkin is somewhat larger than the others in the pack. You look for a nice, large pumpkin to take from the patch. Hey! Watch it! Oh, sorry. I was not aware you could talk. Likewise! Anyway, be careful where you're treading! You're spoiling the good soil by standing so close! And I got eight kids to feed! You glance at the smaller pumpkins. These must be her children. I only count seven. Yeah, well I had eight! Then some strange man, who spoke even stranger, came by! He claimed to be a... Hort... A hort of... The... Horticle... Claim to know a bit about plants. I let him take a look at my little darlings. Anyway, before I knew it, he'd gone and pinched one of my babies. Took off towards the town, he did. Of all the knife. Just because we're plants doesn't mean we don't deserve any respect. I am sure that is true. Pardon me for asking, but how did you come by the ability to talk? With a question like that, I might ask you the same. I was only... I don't take it personal. That old witch hag at the cast a spell on me so I could guide her precious possessions. Hagatha? Yeah, she's the old bag who lives in that cave to the west. You know her type. Green warts, pointed ears, cannibalistic, doesn't bring her trash out. Just your stereotypical evil old crown. Hmm. <laughs> she sounds pleasant. You mentioned something about guarding Hagatha's precious possessions. At least, what she considers precious. I reckon they're anything but! Mind you, 
I have my doubts about Hagatha's legitimate ownership of this stuff, if you know what I mean. What sorts of items does Hagatha wish you to guard? Oh, uh, the usual vanities. All useless in my opinion. But what would I know? The mother pumpkin looks distressed. You decide not to interrupt her at the moment. My name is Graham. What is yours? Possum. That is what my grandma calls me. She is not at all well these days. I was collecting flowers for her, but now I cannot anymore. Why is that? My basket is missing. I have looked everywhere for it. It must be around here somewhere. I will keep my eye out for it. Thank you, Graham. I was wondering, could you tell me anything about this land? You mean Kalima? There is a town to the northeast, and a church not far south of that. Grandma and I live in a house near the beach. You should not enter the swamp to the north. It is said to be influenced by magic. Many have easily lost their way in there, and finding your way out again is difficult. Thank you, Possum. Is there any way at all through the swamp? I do not know, but I did see someone walking out of there not long ago. He was writing something in a book as he walked. Who was that? A monk from the church. You mentioned that your grandma is not well. What ails her? I am not sure, but I think it gives her sad dreams. While she sleeps, sometimes she talks out loud. Sometimes I listen to her. No, do not leave me, she says. At first, I thought she was speaking to me. I would go over to her, but she would not notice me. Then I realized it was a dream. I think she misses the person she talks to in her sleep. And then there's the scary dreams. You mentioned that your grandma had scary dreams. What are these dreams about? Bats. Bats? Yes, in her sleep, she screams with fright, as if a bat is chasing her, or she's being hurt by one. Then she'll say something like, Blue light is the bat's true being, over and over. Blue light? What does she mean? I have asked her this, but she just shakes her head and will not speak of it. Thank you, Possum. I wish your grandma a swift recovery. Thank you, Graham. I will speak of you to her.
you take the basket. You hand the basket to Possum. Thank you, kind sir. Please take this flower. I'm afraid it's all I have to give you. It is more than enough. I notice that you have picked only yellow flowers. Of course. Is it not customary for one to pick yellow flowers for another who is gravely ill? Certainly it is. I'm sorry to hear about your grandma, Possum. Thank you. The calm water of the clear blue ocean looks inviting. The calm You get a feeling for the area. You look under the log and discover a clam lying beneath it. You pick it up. You open the clam and discover, to your surprise, a dazzling pearl. This item cannot be used on it. It is a mailbox. This is the first time you have ever set eyes upon one, which isn't surprising. The postal system won't be invented for another few centuries to come. The residents of this land must either possess clairvoyance or just simply be ahead of their time. You open the mailbox. Inside there is, incredibly, a letter addressed to the resident. You decide to leave it in there. A card has been dropped in it also. You read it. You replace the card and close the mailbox. You attempt to open the door but find it is locked. You think you can hear the sound of labored breathing inside and decide against causing any further disturbance.
This stump is too heavy for one man to lift. You peer into the depths of the dark hole. As luck would have it, you discover a beautiful set of earrings hidden inside. Each one is laced with glittering diamonds and contains a lovely blue sapphire stone in the center. Perhaps someone stashed them here. At any rate, you take them into your possession. High in the treetop, a rope is tied to a branch. You notice a thick rope dangling loosely against the trunk of the tree. Upon closer inspection, you see that the rope actually runs away from the tree and into the thick grass on the forest floor. This is obviously a trap. Three gold coins shimmer in a nearby patch of grass. As you pick up the gold coins, they suddenly turn dark. Now they resemble ordinary metal. Wait a minute. This isn't gold. It's fool's gold. A beautiful stained glass window depicts a radiant full moon. It is certainly one of the more unique images you have seen on a church. The door appears to be barred from the inside. The church must not be open at this time. The fool's gold again shines the instant the coins leave your hand. Three coins in the fountain. What? Let me see.
Thank you, um... Graham. Thank you, Graham. Here, take this. Maybe this useless trinket ahead of this will be of some use to you. So if you're right for not enabling me to protect my kids. The pumpkin hands you a gold brooch with a beautiful blue sapphire. Is there anything more I can do for you? Me thirsty, Mama! Now that you mention it, my baby is feeling a bit poorly. After all, living in a bowl ain't too good for your health, you know? No, I did not know that. What would make your baby feel better? Fresh water, naturally. Of course. Not too sweet, though. In fact, the more bitter the better. My children are very particular about what they drink. I will see what I can do. A large lemon tree grows by the path. You reach out and pluck a large, juicy-looking lemon from the tree. You fill the bowl with the fresh spring water. After using your sword to cut the lemon's surface, you squeeze some of its juice into the bowl. Then you discard the lemon. You pour the bitter water over the baby pumpkin. It seems to like that. Thank you again, Graham. Here, take this. The pumpkin reaches into her head and pulls out a candle, which she then hands to you. That thing has been jammed in my head for as long as I can remember. I know it ain't much. But maybe you'll find some use for it. Thank you. Don't mention it. Besides, it's really hard for me to sleep with that thing lit up inside my head all night.
a word of warning. Hagatha has been talking about you. I heard her mention your name while she was muttering to herself. She does that when she's inspected her valuables. Anyway, I'd stay clear out of her way if I were you. I appreciate the advice. Will Hagatha not be angered when she discovers you've given your candle away? What's she gonna do? Turn me into a pumpkin? Good point. Besides, I could just blame the dwarf. He's earned himself a bad reputation from the day he moved here. Pity no one can catch him, not even Hagatha. If I may ask... Appreciate all you've done, Graham, but I want to spend some quality time with my children. Now be a good boy and run some other errand. 